journey of failure is not that important. Important are my lessons that I have taken from my failures. So I will try to put before you my seven lessons that I have learned. My first lesson is that failure is a social concept. Generally society tells you if you are a failure and a success. We all have faced this. The moment you give an entrance exam, the moment you start a business, the moment you enter into a relationship, people tell you, oh, not this time. Again, she couldn't clear the exam. Oh, he started a business, he failed. Oh, goodness. So this is the kind of tags of failure that society puts on you. The problem is we ourselves don't seem, we don't consider ourselves failures, but society makes you a failure or a success. This is the problem. The moment somebody is trying to put a tag on you, see through. It's not them who should decide whether you are a failure or a success. Who should decide? Only and only you should decide when you have been a failure and when you have been a success. Nobody can tell you whether you are a failure or a success. Second, there is a horizontal aspect of our life and failures and success govern all of them. So there are people who are academic failures, others are career failures, professional failures and some others are emotional failures and more are social failures and above all is identity failure. Identity failure is when you don't know what you want to do and you act by the society set parameters. Marriage at 25, career set at 27, child before 30 and first house before 35. All this is what society sets for you. The moment you, be, you go beyond any timeline you go beyond, they will term you failure. But this horizontal aspect, even when not important for society, it is important for you. If you are failing as an emotional person and you are very successful as a profession, it's still a failure. So it is very important to have a balance because if you regret at the end that you are a very rich, successful person with nobody else to enjoy with, then it is again something you regret. And if you have very loving, good friends, good family, but no money, again it is a problem. Therefore, a balance in all aspects of life is important. So, here we are not talking only about career failures. It is very important that you look your life holistically and organically. Third thing I have analyzed through my failures is that there is a vertical aspect to failures. So imagine there is a mountain which is 500 meters and the person who quit at 50 meters is a failure. Person who quit at 100 meters is a failure and 490 meters is still a failure for society. Only the person who reaches the apex, the peak, the summit is called as success. But is this person who quit at 50 and the person who quit at 490, are they same? They are not same. Absolutely not same. Because the kind of hard work that person has put in, the kind of learnings that person has taken is very different. You cannot compare the failure of a person who has just entered and quit and the person who has tried, or had done determination, had the de determination to go through. You cannot compare these failures. No, not all failures are same. So important what is your pursuit. The person who has failed at 490 is a different person. He is an evolved being. He has learned a lot in the journey. He has the lessons, the wisdom, the knowledge, the skills which he, which he or she can utilize in another venture. This takes me to another of my point. That is, we should not, we should not consider ourselves as failure if we just do not reach the peak. Peak is just one point. And as people say, doors, when one door closes, many doors open. But, but truth be told, these doors are open only for prepared people. So the person who quit at 490, for him or her, these doors are open. Not for the person who quit at 50. Because 
the learnings are different. This person who has learned along the way has other doors open for him or her. Take the example of Amita Bachchan. He was rejected as a radio jockey because of his husky voice. And now that voice has become the major, you know, major attraction, the huskiness, the sincerity of that, that voice has become the major attraction. And of course, we all know he has failed many times and yet again succeeded. So the doors open only for those who keep learning and who keep their pursuit on. This leads to my fifth point. It is very important that we analyze our failures. Many a times I have seen that because somebody tells you being monkey is the next best thing in market, we all try to become monkeys. But if you are better at swimming, then be a fish because you have to play on your strengths. The moment you move beyond your strengths, the moment you try to become something which other person is telling you to, then you lose your strengths and this becomes inevitable failure. Inevitable because you are not prepared for that. You are not loving that. You are not passionate about that. So if you are having failures in life, analyze. Is there something wrong with what you are trying to achieve? Is there something wrong in your direction? Analyze. I, I never say just be obsessive about one thing. But yes, one has to have determination and passion. At the same time, with analysis, whether the direction is right. If you are a fish, be a fish. Be a good fish. Don't be a bad monkey. Because when in society it will judge you, it will always say, this is a bad monkey and that is a good fish. So always do what you are best at. After this, I will tell you my sixth lesson. Regrets. Failures are not that painful. Yes, they are painful. So we all know fa failures are emotional. Moment we fail, we are emotional. World comes crashing onto us. They are uh, hurtful. They are, uh, people criticize us when we fail. People judge us when we fail. And it is, it is, it is like, it is more than physical pain. So somebody hit you, it's not that painful. But if you fail, then it's painful. But trust me. The pain of failure is still less than the failure, the pain of regret. How many of you must have, many of you rather, must have heard your mother's saying that if I would have been given a chance, I would have become this, this, this in my life. It was only because I wasn't given a chance. Or your father's saying that I would have bought that property and it would have made a huge lot of difference in our future. We, we see regrets in old people. And all, what are these regrets? These regrets are regrets of not failing enough. So yes, failure is painful, but regret is more painful. So choose your pain. It is better you do something and then fail. Because in that failing also, there is a lot and lot of learnings that go along the way. I'll just try to put an example here. Steve Jobs. So Steve Jobs was an academic failure, we all know. He quit, he dropped out of his college in his first year. And out of that, he still didn't stop learning. We all know that he went to calligraphy classes, designing classes, just out of interest. No specific purpose, but he kept on learning. And 10 years later, he connected the dots. When he designed Macintosh, he said that if I had not been an academic failure, I would not have been a designing excel. So this is important that even when you fail, you don't stop learning or trying to improve yourself. My seventh point is life is too big. Don't judge yourself on event parameters. So if you have failed an exam, don't judge yourself. It's okay. Don't just Judge yourself with one relationship, one event, one success, one uh, business idea, one uh, entrepreneurial startup. No, don't judge yourself. And I'll tell you how, why. So uh, we all know Einstein. So Einstein was termed as a failure because he could not read when he was four. He could not rather speak when he was four. And again, he was termed a failure at seven 
because he could not read and we all know what scientific marvel he was similarly edison we all are enjoying the benefits of inventions of edison and edison was